Good morning. I spoke with Pastor last night, and um, he's doing well, and let's keep him in our prayers as he's at the funeral of our brother Jerome's mother in Pennsylvania. Let's keep him and Lydia in our prayers as they journey back home. Pastor called me last week and told me he was going to the funeral. And about three weeks ago, I had mentioned to him that I had a message that I'd like to preach. And so he remembered that, and so he asked me, would you like to preach that message? And I said, yes. So as I, at the beginning of the week, was preparing that message and finalizing it, what have you, because I had it already in my heart and on my scratch notes. So as I sat in my little chair and began to meditate, God said, I have something else for you to preach. So pray for me. I want to thank Pastor Delgado for taking my chicken scratch and putting it in the outline form. It was very comforting to see it put that way. But my message is never give up. And as I sat in the chair in my little office, I was reminded of about three or four weeks ago on a Thursday night, we have a combined prayer service. And it was like everyone that was here that night in the combined service was struggling to pray. Everybody was silent. It seemed like they were apathetic. And I had that sense that we sometimes get to a place where we just, you know what? Nothing's going to change. It's always going to be this way. I'll just go to church and do what I'm supposed to do and wait for the trumpet to sound and go on to glory. Some of us sometimes are so heavenly minded we're no earthly good. So God placed it upon my heart to preach this and to talk to you, not as one that has overcome anything, but one who has gone through struggles also. In the introduction, and it's by Catherine Galasso Figueredo, she's in the newspaper, believe it or not, every Saturday. She brings a devotion. It's in the one socket. Uh, in the Pawtucket paper. And I can't wait to get her because every Saturday she speaks to my heart through. So she, my introduction is based on a devotion that she had given. And it says, Right now you may feel as low as you can go. Overcome with pressures and fears, your heart may have become hard. Or feelings, wave of anxiety, your current circumstances can be overwhelming you. But let me encourage you that God wants to bring total restoration. For God sees what you're going through, and he will help you. You're going to be set free from old problems and things that have hurt you for years. Do you believe that? God holds your future in his hands. He created you to be an overcomer. You are more than conqueror through him who loves you. Romans 8, 37. And if God is for you, who can be against you? Amen. My first point is God knows what you're going through. Psalm 50, 11 reads, I know every bird of the mountains. Isaiah 37, 28, but I know you're sitting down and you're going out and you're coming in. God knows you intimately. There's nothing going on in your life that he does not know. Don't worry about, well, how can he know everybody at the same time? Stop that. He knows you. He knows everything about you. He's concerned about you. 
You have to believe every word of this book. Everything in here is true. It's for our encouragement, for our education, to grow us up, to keep us in the right path. These promises that are in this book are for you and I. God will intervene on your behalf. There are times that I've prayed, God, if you don't come through, if you don't intervene, and then when you say that, you need to let go. I remember Maureen one time told me years ago, I wonder how many people come to the altar to pray and then get up and take their concerns back to the pew with them. When you give it to God, you have to trust him and know that he will intervene on your behalf. There is nothing too big or too broken that God cannot renew or restore. No matter what mistake or failure, we're going to slip, we're going to fall, we're going to make mistakes. But don't let that hold you back. Don't let that keep you down. God can turn your mess into a miracle. An unknown writer wrote, there has never been a problem that God wasn't fully able to solve. He has already guaranteed us the victory and the success overall. So as we seek him more and keep him first, keep him first, keep your eyes on Jesus. In our thoughts, our problems will begin to fade away. Matthew 9, 20, 19, 26, and looking at them, and Jesus looking at you, said to them, with people, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. God is preparing us. But I know, God says, I know the hairs on your head. I've counted them. I know. Some of you don't have very many hairs. <laughs> so it's easy to count. But he knows us intimately. He hasn't abandoned you. He hasn't forsaken you. He is right there with you, no matter what. It cost his, him his son. His son died on the cross and suffered horrific death so he can just say, you know what? You're on your own. It makes no sense. What obstacles are you facing? Is God trying to get your attention? Has God put an obstacle or allowed an obstacle to come in your path so he can get your attention? Do you only come to him when things are difficult? Do you only seek his fellowship when things are difficult? Are we seeking him in the good times? Do we seek his intimacy, his love? Is he trying to get your attention so that you can come back to him? Is there something going on in your life that's displeasing? Ask God. God's not intimidated by our questions. Ask him, are you trying to say something to me? Is there something going on that's displeasing to you so that we might change? Obstacles may be painful, but purposeful. 2 Corinthians 12, 7, Paul writes, because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, for this reason, to keep me from exalting myself, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me, to keep me from exalting myself. Sometimes we feel like we're tormented. Sometimes we feel like things will never change. Do you have a thorn in the flesh? Is there something going on that just gnaws at you? that is overwhelming you, that is discouraging you. Never give up. Never give up. 
Though these obstacles may be painful, if you look at them the right way, you'll see God in it. I've gone through some things that, and we all have, and I've been around some of you that have just cried rivers of tears. And I've gone through some things, and I've asked God why, and I've learned to somewhat stop that. But when I look back at some of those things that happened to me in the past, I look back and I say, now I know what you were doing. In times like these, if we seek God, we will grow. If you truly want to know what's going on, what this pain is, what this adversity is, what this obstacle is, why you just want to throw your hands up, seek God. Don't just go around mumbling and grumbling. Seek God. I was, as this week went on, as it would, as things go, I became discouraged. I had doubt. I was, and I knew where it came from. Then five o'clock, yesterday morning, I got a phone call from somebody. We haven't spoken a text. We haven't spoken in a long time. And I just, at the end of that, I said, God, I love you so much. He reminded me he was still in my life. He reminds us if we're sensitive, if we're looking, and we're not walking around, oh, hey, hey. If we're walking with our heads up, do you realize who you are? You're a child of the king. You're a child of the living God, the most high God. He cares about you. There's nothing he wouldn't do to help you. But our attitude has to change. We can't just say, well, he'll help so-and-so, but he won't help me. That's not true. Find a quiet place to sit, to read your Bible, to meditate. Don't just... I have a difficult time, and this is not to uh, criticize... But I have a difficult time because it's only me, the way I do my devotion, is when I hear, spend 15 minutes. How do you spend 15 minutes with the creator of the universe? At least spend 15 minutes with God. And I understand we're all busy, but I can't spend just 15 minutes. I have to spend quality time. And if that means getting up early, if what you're going through is very painful and you need to hear from God, you'll get up early and spend time with him. Again, ask him, what are you trying to say to me? What is going on? He'll answer you. When you ask God, what is going on? I, June 17th, I got up. It was a Saturday. And I said, God, things weren't going well. And I said to God, you need to tell me what's wrong. When you ask God that question, you can, you're going to get an immediate answer the minute you start delving into the scriptures, the minute you start praying. And he opened me up good. He said, I'm not your first love. I'm not your first love anymore. Whoa. And as we spent the rest of that month, I spent it in tears, on my knees, asking for forgiveness because I want him to be my first love. Is he your first love? Is he your second or third? Is he your only love when you come here? He's got to be in you and about you and around you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you're standing in the line at the market, thank you, Jesus. He has to be the most important thing in your life.
these times of adversity and obstacles and just being hopeless, when you seek God, these are times of growth because God is going to touch your life as you seek him. Last week, Pastor Delgado was preaching. And one of the things that I, I sat here and I was just smiling. And he, he opened his Bible and he, he said, I want to turn to a scripture. And I could hear all the Bibles, the pages, flickering. And that was music to my ears. To turn the pages. I'm old school. I don't have a tablet or anything like that. And I'm not criticizing. But to hear those pages flip brought joy to my heart. Seek God. He has something to share. He has something to tell you. We're not just here to, to live a mundane life. We're here for a purpose. One of the, on the program or on the um, prayer request that pastor has for Thursday night, I believe he may have handed them out for us on Sunday, is to pray for young families to come into the church. I want to speak to those of you who are like myself, a senior citizen, an older person. Get ready. The young people are coming. The young families are coming, and they're going to need you. They're going to need our wisdom. Don't think that when these young families come, that all of a sudden, they're going to need our wisdom. We haven't gone through these trials and tribulations just so we can just, oh, God is wonderful. No, we need to share that. Sometimes when we discuss things with the world, we say to the people out there that are not believers, and they say, oh, I know how you're feeling. No, they don't. But those of us who are believers, when somebody is brokenhearted, and we know what they're going through because we've gone through the same thing, we can say, I know what you're going through, but let me tell you what God did for me. Amen. If we view hardships as only troubles, we miss out on God's wonderful demonstration of his love, his power, and his wisdom. Sometimes God gives us an understanding of his purpose. There's a reason behind it. It might be to slow down. You might want to go left, and God says, no, you go right. I have made some decisions in my life without checking with him, and they didn't turn out good. There are times in our lives that, okay, we've got to act quickly. Those of us who have have been parents, and the school calls, and your child is sick, you know what you have to do. You have to go get that child. But if there are times in your life where you don't have to jump, say, whoa, I'm going to talk to God about this. I'm going to seek God about this. You will save yourself a lot of heartache. Sometimes he wants to conquer pride in our lives. Some of us have a lot of pride. Sometimes he puts obstacles and things in our way so we can recognize who truly is Lord of our lives. Norman used to say, Norman Miller, who's in heaven, amen, used to say we have that trinity, me, myself, and I. Wrong trinity. It's God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. God hates sin. Is there sin in our life? We don't talk about sin. Oh, no, not me. I came here last Saturday, Sunday, and some of those who are in leadership saw there was something wrong with me. I had so much anger last Sunday. The one thing I learned Rose said, when things are not going well, you need to sing. 
And as praise and worship was singing, I forced myself to sing. I got better. Then I came up here and prayed, and that was not me. That was the Holy Ghost. And I felt better. My point is, don't stay where you are. Do something about it. Don't just throw your hands up. I've had enough. I'm done. I'm done with him. I'm done with her. I'm done with this. I'm done with that. God isn't going to help me. God is not obligated to work on your schedule. I don't know if you know that. See, we put something in the microwave for two minutes. It gets down to 10 seconds. We're yelling at the microwave. Hurry up. Continue to seek God. Know that he said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. His promises are true. Some of you are going through some hard things. They're weighing you down. You're overwhelmed and you just want to just get in bed in a fetal position, put the pillow over your head and that's it. You've let Satan win at that point. Stop giving Satan credit. My phone call Saturday reminded me that sometimes we, oh, Satan, this and Satan. And he sits back and says, yeah. Talking about me. You're not talking about God. Stop giving him so much credit. And say, you know what? Not today. Not today. Sometimes these obstacles are to get us ready for service. We don't want to hear, oh, I got to volunteer. I got to do this. I got to do that. You don't have to do anything. Some of us are so understanding of grace that, well, I'm saved by grace. Paul said, I don't want my grace to be in vain. I don't want this grace to be, that word vain means futile, fruitless. He saved us by his grace to do something. I don't study the word of God. He says, mine, you can't have it. I need to share that. I need to do something with this grace. I need to be motivated, even when I don't feel motivated. He wants to express his love. How many of us have been through things and all of a sudden you just have this, thank you, this sense of love and tears come to your eyes because you know God is with you. To change our sense of direction. We might be drifting. That's what was happening to me. Things were kind of going smooth and things were in order and everything was in its place, so I'll get to you when I can, God. God said, okay, I love you, but now I have to... Are you drifting? Find out why you have these obstacles. God will show you. Hebrews 13, 5 through 6. I will never desert you. Do you believe that? That was pitiful. Do you believe that? Yes. Nor will I ever forsake you, so that we confidently say, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. What will man do to me? That's the part we forget to say. The Lord is my helper. No greater helper could we have. The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. I want heaven to be my home. Some of us are so ready to get there because we're so overwhelmed and we... You know, I stopped watching the news. I used to like watching the news. I stopped, went three weeks without watching it, and I feel so much better. I'm done watching these fools. Oh, my goodness. It's like a soap opera. 
When I was 14 years old, I had broke my leg and I was out of school and I got addicted to watching soap operas. And from when it started to when I went back to school, nothing changed. It was the same thing. This is news. News is a soap opera. You watch it and all of a sudden you wring your hands and go, oh, this, that, and that. Stop. Try it. Don't watch the news for a couple of weeks. You'll feel a lot better. We watch the news and we're going outside to see if the missiles are coming. We're being held hostage by the world with their foolishness. I have a friend who said to me years ago, must be true if it's on TV. <laughs> Who's in control? God's in control. And if you're a believer in Christ, you don't have to worry if the missiles are coming because you're gone. You're out of here. Trust in his promises. Don't forget, he has numbered the hairs on your head. He knows you. He has a specific promise for you. He knows you intimately. Trust in his timing. There's a small book that I read, and a lot of the books I have, Pastor gave to me, and I believe the gentleman's name was Robert Morgan, and he wrote this book called Red Sea Rules, as in the Red Sea, Moses and the Red Sea. And there are rules that he wrote this book. And one of the things is, we, you know, we pray to God and we waiting. Give God time to work. He's moving people, place. He's moving things around. And while you're waiting, seek him. Get in fellowship with him. Strengthen yourself for that blessing that he's preparing for you. Give God time to work. I say it again, he's not obligated to work on your schedule. Because his time is the appropriate time for you. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Casting all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. It doesn't say cast some anxieties, this, because he's a nice guy. Cast all your anxieties on him, for he cares for you. He does care for you. He cares whether you pass an exam. He cares about where you work and the struggles that you go through at work. He cares what's going on here with friendships. He cares about all of our concerns, all on cast. Give them to him. One of the hardest things to do in a Christian life is to take some of these problems literally. Oh, isn't that a nice thing to read? Apply it. Cast it. And then walk away saying, you know what? God's got this. How many of you have, are sitting here right now that have gone through things and God came through for you? And did he say, by the way, this is the last time. You're on your own next time. <laughs> Remember those things that he did for you. And he will do it again. We sang a song, and he will do it again. Are we patient? That's one of the things we lack in our society over here. Because we have so much going on, and we have so much that we can access. We're not patient. Trust in God. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will Make your path straight. Some of us are leaning on it. We have a plan, a plan B. You pray to God and you have a plan B. We're not trusting him. 
We, you know why we don't trust God? We don't think he can solve our problems. That's why we don't trust him. No, he can't do that. See, in my small mind, when I'm going through something, I'm fortunate if I can come up with five solutions. God has a million ways to solve your problems. A million. There are times that, like the phone call Saturday, or whatever it might be, God, he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Do you believe that? We think in this high-tech society, God controls the computers. It's not just flesh and blood. There was a preacher during the Great Depression who was going to a tent revival and his car was low on oil. He went into the church. He had to be there at such and such a time. He got the anointing oil, poured it in the car and away he went. God is in control. God controls everything and he will turn it for your good. Sometimes we think our past, what I did seven years ago, how can God love me? How can he not? He sent his son to die on a cross for us. How can he not? If you have something that's just been in your past and you just can't let it go, you need to get on your knees and say to God, you need to help me with this. I can't let go. Some of you enjoy where you are. Because you recognize and you're used to this obstacle. You're used to this condition, this emotional condition. You're used to it. I know this. This is, my life is going nowhere and I know this. Have you ever tried something else and say, you know what, Lord, give me a new experience. Give me joy, unspeakable joy. When I was growing up, when I, and we'd watch TV and there'd be these old movies of prisoners. I don't know that they do it anymore, but they used to have the prisoners, when they left the prison yard to go outside the prison walls to work, they used to have a ball and chain. They had this long chain and this heavy, heavy ball. Where are you going to go with that heavy, heavy ball? You can try running all day and the gods are just going to laugh at you. Where are you going? Some of us need to break that chain. Get rid of the ball. Get rid of what it is that's holding you back. All these things cause us to give up. We can't give up. God has a plan for us. Some of you are feeling the weight of the world. And when, you, when God solves one thing and helps you with another, all of a sudden another one comes. And you say, Wait, God, why do you keep doing this? He'll tell us when we get to heaven. I know you don't like that answer, but he'll tell us. God has a million ways. Again, he has a million ways to solve your problems. He has not brought you this far to give up on you. So don't give up on yourself. God hasn't given up on you. God hasn't given up on me. I'm up here not feel, I didn't feel worthy to say, as the week went on and, and how things transpired, I said, I can't go up in the pulpit. But by the grace of God and his mercies that are new every day, I'm standing here. Not because I did anything. He made me worthy. He has an amazing future in store for you. We don't think positively sometimes. We don't think that God has an amazing future for me. Some of us are over 60. 
amazing future. I'm, I got one foot in the grave. You don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. You don't know what amazing thing God is going to do for you tomorrow or this afternoon. We count God short. How can we do that? Don't count him short. He loves you. If I could express to you how much he loves you, there are just those times that he surrounds us with his love. Sometimes you're in your darkest place. Know that he loves you. Know that he said, he, picture this. I know what you're going through. I know what you're thinking. I know the burdens you're having. I'm right here. Affirm some positive thoughts. Affirm scripture. Get on your knees. Cry out to God. Don't accept your condition. Don't accept the way you're living right now. Don't accept those burdens. You have something to do. You have something to say. And if Satan can keep your mouth shut, that's somebody who's not hearing your story. That's a soul that you could save. That's a witness you could bring. Dump, doubt, and despair. Acts 18... Uh, 16, 25 through 34. I'd like to read that. Acts 16, 25 through 34. But about midnight, Paul and Silas are in prison. Some of us feel like our condition, the thing that we're going through, we're in prison. When I was taking care of my mother, when she was, this is many years ago, my cousin Wold said to me, you're like somebody who's in prison with the doors wide open. I'll never forget that. You're in prison with the doors wide open. Think about that. Are you in prison with the doors wide open? That means you're holding yourself back. You're not letting God work. But about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns of praise of praise to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Imagine that. The prisoners are listening. The prisoners must have, these guys have lost their mind. And suddenly there came a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison house were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer awoke and saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself supposing that the prisoners had escaped. That was a big deal. If you were in charge of certain prisoners and they got away, you were, in, you were accountable for that. You took their place or you were executed. But Paul cried out with a loud voice saying, Don't harm yourself, for we are all here. And he called for lights and rushed in and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. And after he brought them out, he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Think about it. His life is on the line and the prisoners didn't escape and they could have. That's a but God moment, an aha moment. What is with these guys? I want what they got. I want that joy in the midst of adversity. They said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. And they spoke the word, the Lord to him, spoke the word of the Lord to him together with all who were in the jailhouse, not just the jailer, but to all. And he took them that very hour of the night and washed their wounds and immediately he was baptized and he and his whole household. And he brought them into his house and set food before them and rejoiced greatly, having believed in God with his whole household. Keep your eye on Jesus Christ. Don't take your eye. He's not up there no more. I don't know if you recognize that. He's gone. He isn't there. He's here. 
He's here. Sing a song. When you're down, fight. Don't let discouragement and despair and doubt creep in and win. Fight. Put on godly music. Listen to godly programming. Fellowship with godly people. There's a joke that I have told before where Satan's going out of business and he has this long table of all the tools that he has. But on this one table, all by itself is this tool and this thing is beat up. But it's, the price tag is astronomical. So a man comes up to him and says, why is this tool that is the worst looking tool you've got so exp expensive. He says, that's my most effective tool. It's discouragement. When Satan gets in there and discourages you, it just goes downhill from there. Fight. Don't let him win. Don't let negativity, don't let what people say about you win. You are a child of the King, of the Most High God. That counts for something. That counts for everything. Memorize positive scriptures. Philippians 4.19, God will supply all my needs. Again, all my needs. God will supply. Do we believe that? Never give up. God is right beside you. God will lead us in triumph. With the right attitude, how can God bring us into a place of blessing, into a place of victory, into a place where I say, I can't wait to tell people what God has done for me if we're walking around with our heads down and our attitudes in the gutter. He wants us to live a life of victory so that we get victory we know what to do with it. Matthew 19, 26. With God, all things are possible. Seek godly fellowship. Be involved. Isn't it amazing? Haven't you ever done something nice for somebody and you felt good? When you feel bad, what can I do that's good? What can I do for somebody? How can I help someone? God will show you. Might be the person across the street. Might take only a phone call. I want to tell you a story of someone. This man failed in business and filed bankruptcy. He was defeated for state legislature. Again, he failed in business and filed for bankruptcy. His fiance died. He suffered a nervous breakdown. Defeated when he ran for Speaker of Congress. He was defeated for a local town office. He was defeated for Congress again. He was elected for Congress, but defeated when he ran for re-election. He was defeated as he ran for Senate. He was defeated for the Vice Presidency. Back then, you had to run to be uh, an elected to the Vice Presidency. He was defeated for the Senate, then he was elected president of the United States. That was Abraham Lincoln. Never give up. You don't know. Some of us, the first thing on the list, we're done. Don't do that. Give God a chance to come into your life and to impact you, to impact the people around you. It's not about, always about us. It could be about the people around us. In conclusion, my daughter gave me this poem. It's in your program. I wouldn't think of starting out to face the coming day without a thank you word to God to help me on my way. Do we, when was the last time we said thank you to God? Thank you, God. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for giving me the ability to walk and talk. Thank you, Lord, for giving me your promises. Thank you, Lord, because I know my circumstances are going to change. Thank you. For when things seem uncertain and my steps 
may falter too. It is then I ask the Father for his help in what to do. Ask him. Yes, he's always there to help me when I stumble and I fall, to give me aid and pick me up and guide me through it all. What a wonderful companion. What a joy in life to know that the Father God walks with me no matter where I go. Regardless of what you're going through, God is saying to you today, do not be afraid. Be strong and courageous. Fear not. You can trust me. Let your faith, let your belief, this God that some of us have, has not, we have known since our childhood, he's stronger than our fear. Amen? Corinthians 4, 16 through 18, verse, verse 18 says, so we don't look back. Don't leave here and hit the sidewalk and say, oh, what am I going to Leave here expecting. As believers, we need to expect that God is going to move in our life, in our circumstances. So we don't look back at the troubles we can see. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. Someday, no more crying, no more pain, no more heartache, no more tears. Being in his presence. Think of that. Read the last book in the Bible. We win. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. For the things we see now will soon be gone. But the things we cannot see will last forever. Let us pray. Lord, our Heavenly Father, we come to the throne of grace and mercy humbly and boldly, knowing that you care for us, that you love us, and that your mercy, your mercies endure forever. Thank you for your grace that is eternal, that sustains us and gives us breath. You care for us. You love us. Nothing, your word says in Romans 8, nothing can separate us from your love. Nothing. Nothing can separate us from your love. Lord, we leave here today looking forward and expecting wonderful things from you, expecting joyful things from you, expecting victory. I don't want to give up, Lord. I want to go forward in your presence. You have a plan for me. You have a plan for us. And you said it's a good plan. Help me to be obedient and to act and to move according to your love, your word, and your principles. I thank you for these people. I love this church so much. I love these people. And my prayer is that you touch each and every heart from the top of their head to the soles of their feet restoring their joy if they've lost it, restoring their attitude, purging their mind of negativism, knowing that you can do all things. I can do all things. We will do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We thank you. We love you. We adore you. In your son's Jesus' name, amen. Go in peace. God be with you.